Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at how to build and get an application running on the Mac operating system. So we're going to be compiling from source code the latest version of the SDL library at the time of this recording. But the instructions should work regardless of what version is out there. Again, it's going to be compiling from source, which is a great skill to have. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive over to the Mac and get this library built. So once you're at the libsdl.org website, let's go ahead and download the source code for SDL. And again, we're looking at some version that is three point something at this point where you can follow these directions. So go ahead to the SDL GitHub here. And of course we'll want the main repository. And if you wanna pick a particular tag here, again, the one that I'm looking at at the time of this recording is 3.2.4, but I'm just gonna grab the latest and greatest from the main branch here and just copy this repository. You can also download the zip if you want as well, if for some reason cloning's not working or you don't have GitHub installed. So let's go ahead and start that process. And again, I've got this uh, mostly empty directory here. I'll talk about the sample here and the code above, which you can see, which is uh, empty. But let's just go ahead and copy in, or rather clone that repository here. And that'll just take a moment. Now, while that's cloning, a few different things that we're gonna need prerequisites. Um, you are gonna need CMake version 3.28, let's say, a more relatively recent version. So you can just go to download. And if you're on Mac, which you're following along here, just download the DMG here, and you can basically just drag the install into your uh, applications, and it's a relatively simple install. I'll show you how to use CMake if you haven't used it before. The other thing that I'd recommend is Homebrew. Um, and again, you can just copy this command into your terminal to install it. And a really useful package is pkg. Uh, config here that you'll want to install. That's what we're going to be using to make our install pretty easy here. Uh, and I guess you install it with pkg uh, conf here, okay, which is also known as pkg config um, for various operating systems. So again, this is going to look relatively similar to my other install videos, which you'll see here. Of course, I've just got the Linux one posted now. You'll see this Mac one uh, and other platforms, and eventually we'll look at how to set up SDL in many different environments. So stay tuned for that. But um, now that, uh, let's go ahead and return back to what we're focused on here, installing the SDL library from source here. So again, I've got this SDL folder here. Let's go into it. Um, and you'll find the install directions here. Uh, we're going to be following the CMake directions here. And again, maybe later, again, as mentioned, we'll do the Xcode install as well. Um, but the main thing that we're going to want to do here, let's find that uh, install uh, file here. Uh, let's see, where was that? So install, and we could go docs uh, intro to uh, CMake. Let's see, what was it here? Let's see, the into docs. And again, we've got a whole bunch of, you know, instructions here. Let's just look at the intro for CMake briefly. Um, again, this is going to be sort of our minimum uh, CMake file here. But, you know, as far as the directions go, there's some Windows specific directions here. But mostly, it's just asking us to make a build folder uh, within directory here, and we could do a build uh, within that folder. Sometimes you don't do the builds in the folder. It doesn't really matter here, but um, that'll be easy for us to keep track of. Uh, but let me go ahead and just uh, illustrate it for you. So from the root directory of the SDL library, again, let's go ahead and navigate there. We'll make a build directory. We're going to move into the build directory, and I'll run CMake, and uh, basically I want to look up a directory. So if I look up a directory here, it'll find this CMake list uh, file here, and it'll build in this folder a make file. Okay. Now, of course, if you want to build an Xcode file or some you know sort of project like that uh, to do the compilation of the SDL library, you can do that. But we're going to just do this option. Now, um, something again that might be interesting is if you poke around the SDL library in the documentation, you'll also see different options for CMake. Like in the example folder, for instance, there is you know some more flags if you want to compile all the examples. Uh, we're just going to focus on getting a project ready. So let's just go ahead and compile this and see if this uh, works, or rather, I shouldn't say compile, but set up our CMake uh, to generate a make file for us so that we can compile the SDL3 library. And once we do that, then we'll compile the SDL3 library, build our library, and test it out on an example. So it looks like it worked here. Uh, if for any reason you have you know trouble with this, uh, you could try to follow the dependencies uh, that are listed here that you need to install and then just use a tool like brew for instance to install things So anyways, let's go ahead and from our uh, build directory 
you'll see it generated a bunch of files, in particular this make file that is of interest. And this sdl3.pc uh, for that pkg config uh, tool that was mentioned here uh, will be useful. So let's go ahead and just run make. Uh, and I'm gonna do a parallel build here. So you can try this in parallel with dash j16. If you don't wanna do that or it doesn't work for some reason, just run make. And this will basically build our SDL3 library here. And hopefully, you know, we won't run into any uh, trouble here. But again, it's building for our specific Mac operating system here. So it looks like it built a shared library. Uh, and we should see these shared libraries with the dilib uh, suffix here to ensure that, again, that they were built here. So now what we're going to do here is uh, one more thing here. We're going to run make install. Uh, and I'll run sudo make install because you might need to be a super user to do this. And this is basically going to save the paths here, wherever this build directory is, to our library. So it'll be easy for us to link in the library to our C++ source code in this demonstration here. Okay, so you might need to type in your password for your Mac here. And you'll see it installed, uh, you know, the directories wherever uh, SDL was installed as determined by the make file and CMake. So these are usually pretty default directories here. Okay. All right, so now that we allegedly have SDL installed, uh, we can go ahead and uh, test this out or put it to a theory. Uh, again, I like using that pkg config tool. And again, if you don't have that brew install pkg conf, I guess was the uh, trick for that. Let's just go ahead and run it. Let's see what happens here. Uh, it might make us want to like update a bunch of stuff here. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's the, the idea or the command that you might need to run here. I'm going to cancel that because I'm pretty sure I already have it. <laughs> but anyways, uh, what that does here is installs. So it'll look for this file, which was installed with the sudo make install command. And then I can run pkg config uh, and look for the library location of sdl3, for instance. And it'll have that set up. So it'll have the linker path, the R path, so it knows how to get to the dynamic libraries where they're installed to link in sdl3. Uh, and additionally, the header file locations as well. Um, so if we look in that location, uh, let's actually just cd into user local include. I should have a SDL3 folder here. Uh, in fact, I have an SDL2 folder as well, because uh, as many of you know, we have tutorials on that. Uh, but then again, you can see all the SDL uh, files here. So let's go back here just to our build directory. Um, and we should be uh, pretty much set up here. So let's go back here and build a little project here. So this is my main CPP that I have here. Uh, we've got to populate it with a file. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and again, just looking at the SDL3 documentation, I found this one that looked nice uh, ahead of time. I actually haven't tried this, so we'll try it together. Uh, let's go ahead and compile, uh, or rather grab this source code and we'll get ready to compile it. Let's go back up here. Let's do a set paste. Uh, and paste in our code here. And again, we should see at the top that we're referring to SDL3. Uh, again, just make sure if you're looking at any examples, that's what you've got here. Uh, you know, if you want a little bit more confidence, there's also SDL git version here, which should show that you're linking against SDL, you know, three dot something. Um, so maybe we'll pop that in here just out of curiosity to see if that's, uh, you know, working. Uh, but let's go ahead and try this example here. Uh, and if you sort of scroll through this example, you'll see it does something like, I think it's just going to display an image sample.bmp. Uh, so I spent a lot of time creating this image here, <laughs> just so we had something to display here uh, in the local directory. Uh, and of course, I'm kidding, but you, you know, you could create a little example like that if you want. Uh, and then it looks like it's just going to render that uh, to our screen here, okay, which is, you know, super exciting. Uh, but let's go ahead and try to compile this and see the steps here. So if I just try to compile this uh, file here, uh, you know, you'll run into a bunch of these, you know, reference errors here, which basically says, hey, you know, these aren't syntax errors. That's good news. So that means, you know, the sample that we grabbed from the documentation was correct and working. Um, but what we want to do is make sure that uh, we link in our library here. So let's go ahead and try this. And the best way to do this is to use the backticks pkg config dash libs and SDL3. And again, that handy tool will basically just find all the library paths for us. Now you can, of course, specify those manually or maybe use some other tool, but I like using uh, this particular tool. Uh, there used to be SDL config, uh, maybe that's still around somewhere, which would do a similar job here. So let's go ahead and try that. Uh, and let's see, it looks like it's giving us a warning here uh, about the library that was built for a newer Mac OS than what's being linked. Uh, let's see if that causes any problems if we actually run it here. Uh, I think if we actually run it, it does not. So it works here. So great. Um, now, 
there is one other thing that I do want to show you with compiling this. We probably want to pass in the C flags uh, that tell us the location of the header file. So most of you, this is going to be you know the command that you want to do here. And again, since we're on Apple uh, or a Mac machine, it's probably running Clang++. So this is the most like super correct version, I suppose. <laughs> we can go ahead and run here. So go ahead and try to build this here. I actually don't know about this warning here. Um, there was actually an instruction here that you can set the uh, development target. Uh, let's see if I can find it really quick. I'll spend half a second here. Um, I forget what this thing is. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go into SDL and let's go into our install directions. I believe this is going to be under the Xcode Apple platforms. Um, I think you can change the target uh, to like 10.3 or something, uh, but it doesn't seem like it's causing any uh, issues here uh, for us, so we won't worry about it. Uh, but anyways, that is enough to uh, get up and running here. Um, and let's see here. Uh, I wonder, do I have LD on this system? I might here. Um, oh, I guess I don't. I wanted to show you if it would show the uh, uh, library actually being loaded here. But anyways, this will do the trick here. So that's all you really need to get SDL uh, up and running. Let's go ahead and play with this guy here. We could just do a quick copy and paste in here uh, to see what's going on. Uh, with the version that we're linking against, uh, I suspect I need to do this after I initialize SDL. Uh, so let's go ahead and paste that in here. Let's go ahead and rebuild here. So this will be sort of your cycle here. Uh, let's go ahead and run our program here. Uh, looks like it's running here. It says we compiled and linked against SDL version 3.25, but we are linking against, okay. I mean, that's just giving you a um, idea of what was linked and what was actually compiled. Um, so, I mean, we're doing the correct thing here. So, you, you know, despite what the message says. <laughs> so we wanna make sure that we're compiled and sort of linked against the same version. Usually that can be a handy debugging and logging thing. So again, the important thing being that we now see in this series version three, which is enough for us to proceed forward. So again, we've got all the libraries uh, linked in here. So now you should be able to run and uh, follow along with those examples. And hopefully uh, this is working. Uh, if not, you know, let us know in the comments if there's something that we can help with or the community can help with. Otherwise, this series and all the videos will be posted on courses.mshot.io as well if you want to follow along there. So feel free to do that as well. And uh, feel free to engage in the discussions there as there might be some helpful information as well from the community. Anyways, folks, that'll get you up and running with SDL3 on the Mac and enjoy. Alrighty, folks, so there you have it. Hopefully you have SDL3 up and running and I'm gonna look forward to hearing about your creations. And as mentioned, feel free to engage in the discussion below if you have any trouble and hopefully myself or someone from the community will be able to help you out. Anyways, folks, thanks again for your time and attention. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.